The rich mineral resources underneath Paris have been one of the city's major assets all through history since ancient times. In the first century AD, the Romans ruled Gaul, and Paris was still called Lutetia. The city extended over the left bank of the Seine from the Ile de la Cité. The Gallo-Romans needed freestone to build their monuments, the forum, amphitheaters, thermal baths. The first open cast quarries were developed. From the 13th century onwards, the quarries were underground. More and more materials were needed in medieval Paris for buildings such as the Louvre, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, and Philippe Auguste's ramparts. New extraction methods were devised and vertical shafts with lifting wheels installed. With these winches, operated by a workman climbing up the rungs, it was possible to lift bigger and bigger blocks. Paris was now the capital of the Kingdom of France, and was still growing. New deposits were worked, and from the 16th century onwards, they stretched southwards around what is now the Place d'Enfer Rochereau, where you came into the catacombs. Remember that at the time, the 14th arrondissement was outside the city limits. The first quarries were worked out and gradually abandoned. Until in 1785, Louis XVI finally decided to close down the cemetery and move it. changing ritual. 
hearses crossed the city at nightfall, covered with a black veil, and followed by priests in surplices chanting the office for the dead. Briefly resumed the process in the mid-19th century for the major redevelopment. The bones were thrown down shafts altogether, in some places piled up to a height of 30 meters, with no distinction of birth. They're estimated to be the remains of over 6 million Parisians, including important historical figures such as Rabelais, Hassine, Lully, Pascal, Danton and Robespierre, as well as Guillermo, the quarry inspector himself. Now walk towards the entrance of the ossuary and start the next commentary. Please remember that you're not allowed to touch the bones or to take flash photographs. Oh, like a small well. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Oh well. Yeah, see the money? Yeah. <laughs> Watch out for the steps. Yeah. Got it. I'd hold on, but they're skulls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell these passages. Death, and finally yeah. the hope of another life. An idea that's as sweet, as necessary, as it's comforting for those who are mourning. Ericard de Toury also had stone plaques carved inside the ossuary, from which you can identify where the bones came from and when they were moved here. A small circular area was built around it, with walls made of bones from the Cemetery of the Innocents. The fountain takes its name from a story in the Gospel of St. John, in which Jesus stopped beside a well and entered into conversation with a Samaritan woman. When she questioned him, he answered in these words, which you can read on one of the pillars at the back. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. In November 1813, the fountain was used for a scientific experiment. Four goldfish were placed in it. After two years, Erika de Toury found that they had adapted to their new environment, but they had not reproduced. He also noted that the quarrymen believed the fish could predict changes in the weather. <laughs> <laughs> 